Hi everybody. So a new nuclear battery has been unveiled by a Chinese company called Betavolt and they're calling it their BV100. It's a combination of nickel 63, which is a radioactive isotope, and diamond semiconductors. And it's supposed to be able to power devices for the next 50 years without ever needing to be recharged. Now they're making a 100 milliwatt version which measures 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters. And it's in pilot production now with full scale production expected in about 2025 when they're looking at generating a one watt version with an energy density expected to be more than 10 times lithium ion. Now, of course, there isn't an explosion or fire risk with this kind of device, and the nickel radioactive isotope actually decays back into harmless copper. So, not prone to fire? No charging recycling problems? Relatively harmless to the environment? What's not to love about such a prospect? Nuclear batteries have actually been around since about the 1950s, though most of them are what are called radiothermal generators, where the heat from the decaying radioactive elements was turned into electricity by using some sort of thermocouple or a Stirling engine. It was in 2016 when the new principle of using diamond layers as a semiconductor was first tried. The idea is to select an isotope that releases beta particles, which are, are essentially high-energy, high-speed electrons or positrons, into a diamond matrix, which generates an electric current, which is, of course, where Betafont got its name from. Betafont's new battery, called the BV100, uses two single crystal diamond semiconductors layers with a thickness of 10 microns, sandwiching a 2 micron layer of nickel 63. Each one of these sandwiches can produce a current and they can be stacked up or linked up just like old fashioned batteries to form hundreds of independent modules that work together to boost the current or the voltage. The whole thing is then sealed in a protective case to shield against the radiation and protect the battery against physical damage. The current BV100 can produce 100 microwatts at 3 volts and measures 15 by 15 by 5 millimeters. And it's thought that one day such batteries could power your mobile phone so that it never needs recharging. It is a wonderful thing, that's for sure, but it doesn't stand in isolation. It has a history. In 2018, the Russians created a nuclear battery. Um, they actually followed work done by Bristol University where what they did was take the carbon rods out of a nuclear reactor and turn it into a battery. Now, the carbon rods are used to um, cover the nuclear fuel rods because the nuclear fuel rods put out lots of neutrons. Some of those neutrons are just fast moving, some of them are hot. You want the hot ones inside, you want to get rid of the fast moving ones. So the fast moving ones go into the graphite that surrounds the rod, absorbed in the graphite and changes carbon 12 and 13, which is pretty innocuous, into carbon 14, which is radioactive. So, of course, when they decommission a nuclear reactor, there's a ton of radioactive graphite kicking about. What Bristol did was take that graphite, sublime it, that, turn, that is, turn it directly from a solid into a gas, use chemical vapor addition and create a sheet of radioactive diamonds. That's kind of cool if you think about it, because diamond actually is a semiconductor when it's in that stage. So making a sheet of radioactive diamond and putting another semiconductor device on top of it means that they were able to make a battery out of it. And this battery works in pretty much the same way as a solar cell does by emitting these alpha particles or beta particles, knocking off electrons and driving a current. Uh, when something decays, it decays back from carbon-14 to carbon-12, or whatever it is doing that way, and it does it by the emission of alpha particles, which are helium, or beta particles, which are electrons. Now, diamond emits an awful lot of beta particles, so it's called beta-voltaic. Other materials emit an awful lot of alpha particles, and they're called alpha-voltaic. Both of these have been used in batteries before. It was in 1970 when the first nuclear battery was um, commercialised, and it was used in pacemakers. Because it was used in pacemakers, and because it had an 88-year lifespan, then you need never replace it. Normally, a pacemaker is replaced through surgery every five to ten years, but these nuclear ones that were put in the 1970s never need replacement. They're 88 years lifespan, and you're done. You would, you would be in your grave longer than it would take for this battery to run out. Now, that's only... Um, pacemakers, they use plutonium actually. 
and the half-life of it is what it gives it its power. Now, when you think about nuclear batteries, you probably think about space shuttles, that sort of thing, really high-end, really um, dangerous stuff. And that's very true, they, they are. But they're also exceedingly interesting because they last such a long time. In themselves, they have a low energy density during a short period of time, but because they last for such a long time, they've got huge amounts of energy density. And of course, we've got quite a lot of nuclear waste. So being able to use that nuclear waste in a productive manner like that is what's got everybody kind of excited, particularly as Bristol and the Russians have come up with this diamond battery. And that's got a lot of people's imaginations going. Now, I think we're going to make our own nuclear battery because they're surprisingly easy to make. You only really need three things. You need a smoke alarm, the ionization type, and you need a transistor. Now I'm using the 2N3055, uh, 2, 2N3055, 2055, what is it? Ah, 3055. So I'm using a transistor, the 2N3055, because these things can be used as straightforward solar cells. If you chop off that top, connect to the collector, which is the tin here and the base of the output legs, then you'll get yourself a solar cell when you pop that into the sun. Because a nuclear battery needs an ionization source and a semiconductor junction. And the only other thing it needs is a healthy disregard for your own safety and that of any future children who may be born with two heads. If you've got those things, then you can make your own nu nuclear battery actually really easily. Now, what's inside these things is an NPN junction. These two are the N materials, and this one is the P material, and you want the NP junction. Now, between the base, which is this leg here, and the case, is the NP junction that's lying on the top. So it's the one that's going to perform the best. If you want to make a solar cell, you do exactly the same thing, just shine it in the sun, and you'll get the most out of that particular junction, although they'll all work. Anyway, let's take this apart and have a look so inside. So that's what it looks like on the inside once we've got it open, and that tiny square is the semiconductor material and there's some delicate wires going to each pin. You've got it exposed to ambient light and you can see on the pip it's about a quarter of a volt. If I cover that up then obviously the voltage drops off because I bring a light response, got myself a torch, shine that on and there we go, the voltage jumps up. So that's the transistor having a photovoltaic effect and like I say, alpha voltaics and photovoltaics are not too different from each other. So now what we need to do is take our source out of here. These are ionizing alarms use a Mericum 241 as their radioactive source. They collect the um, smoke, ionize it, and that's how the smoke alarm actually works. But inside there is a small piece of Mericum 241. Now, Mericum has a half-life of something like 432 years. So just like that little square in the photovoltaic is only going to produce about 70 microamps or so, it's not going to produce a huge amount but it's going to do it for 430 years, and that's what makes them incredibly energy dense. Okay, so, word of warning, this is for experimentation purposes only, so that I can show you what's going on, and it's meant for education and illustration, and I'm doing it so you don't have to. So if you go ahead and do this yourself, well on your own head be it. It's purely for educational entertainment purposes. Take your smoke anyway. alarm apart, you'll have this big black thing in here. That's where the actual material is, that's just a piezo buzzer. If we take that black thing off, you find this red thing here, and right in the centre there is the Americum emitter. Now it's held in a case covered with foil and covered with a ceramic, and so behind it actually, the alpha particles can't actually escape. It's only from that little dot there that all the alpha particles are being fired out. So if I point it at you, you're the one getting the radiation, not me! <laughs> So I've got my radioactive material and put it on a stick. So it's at the moment emitting alpha particles only in that direction. So I have no intention of staring at this like that or pointing it at my genitals. What I'm going to do is keep it pointing outwards. Now, we have our transistor here. We've got our pip and you can see it's reading about a quarter of a volt. And that's because of the ambient light. If I stick my finger over there so that we can see that it's, we've got no light going in there, and it drops right down to what is more or less zero. And that's because I'm about to cover it with this. So anything that produces is going to be because of the radiation that's coming off of there, not because of the ambient light. So.
we go, we successfully made ourselves a nuclear battery. It was alpha voltaic and it was using the same principle as photovoltaic cells do by hitting that uh, NP junction with alpha particles and driving a current. And that and beta voltaics are the um, basis for most of the research in nuclear batteries at the moment. And as I say, this is a demonstration uh, and we now have ourselves a nuclear battery. It didn't give out a huge amount, but it wouldn't do. But with americium, it will last 432 years. So that is going to be pretty energy dense over the lifetime of the battery. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's how you make your own nuclear battery. And if you did, please remember to like and subscribe.